Hi, the other day I posted a track on YouTube. It was my first jam using Stepic and Ableton Live 12. And the developer of Stepic replied to me saying, I've got a tip for you. And I'm gonna sort of expand on the tip that he's given me in this video today. So this is great for launching Stepic patterns without committing the MIDI data to clips via drag and drop. This keeps things fluid so that you can change your Stepic sequences if you want to. So if I go to a Stepic here that's uh, up and running with live here, you can see that in the automation page, I've got these uh, three lanes. One's doing the cutoff, one's doing the glide, and one's doing the attack on the synth that I'm using, which is a Profit plugin. These are set up on control change 15, three and 30 respectively. So in other words, these three lanes are working with the uh, Profit synth and uh, they are automating those three parameters. And of course, if I wanted to change that on the fly, if I wanted to hit the dice or change the step numbers, I could because Stepic is running. So if you look at this clip here, pattern one, drag and drop D&D, &D, you'll see that there are notes here and I've dragged and dropped those in from the Stepic pattern. So there's basically two types of clips here. There are clips where Stepic is running there are clips where I've dragged and dropped the MIDI in and the Stepic has been bypassed. And that's fine, but of course with Stepic running, you can tweak things on the go. Once you've dragged and dropped the MIDI data into the clip like this one here, all right, you're not stuck with it. You can change the MIDI notes, you can change stuff in here, but you can't do any of the, the good stuff that you can in Stepic. So let's just go back and show you how I did this. So this first track here is just a kick drum. So this first scene up here, sorry about the red border, that's something my loop deck's doing here, but if I play this first scene here, all it's doing is triggering this kick clip in my Avenger synth, and that's all it's doing. And you can see that running down the bottom there. Okay, that's fine, that's just sort of a guide. Now the second track, Profit 5, if I click the first clip, that's empty, so that is basically off. That's why when I play this first scene, you don't hear anything from the prophet. With the pattern one here, if I open this up, now you'll see within this, if I just drag this up a bit, you'll see that in this pattern, I've got two long notes, a C6 and a C4. Now the C6 is going to choose pattern number one in Stepic. How do I know that? Right, okay, let's go to the Stepic. We'll just double click this and we'll go into the Stepic here. Now if I click on this grid up here, you'll see that switch pattern one is mapped to a C6 note and switch pattern two is mapped to a C sharp six. And I've done this prior to doing this video. Basically you click map and you press the key on your keyboard, your MIDI keyboard that's connected to your computer and this note will come up and that means that that note will trigger that pattern at any given point. If you find your keyboard isn't working, you're not getting the notes and you find that those notes aren't going in on that MIDI map, make sure this is turned red. You click this so it's in recalled armed mode, otherwise it won't work at all. And that's something I found out just by doing this. So that's a, a little bit of a tip for you there in case you struggle with that, because it doesn't work. So the notes C6 and C sharp six are triggering patterns one and two respectively. And I've got pattern one here and pattern two here. There's pattern one, look at pattern two and you'll see the green sliders are different, the notes are different. And also with pattern one, if we go to the automation page, I've got automation lanes here, cut off, glide and attack. Okay, but with pattern two, there is no automation, even though these are assigned. So if you want to know how to create an empty clip, just find a slot and double click, and then it does that. It opens up a clip with nothing in it at all. So that's an empty slot in this Profit 5 track. That's what we've got here in this first slot on the Profit 5 track. So that when I play this kick only scene one, you'll see that it's playing the kick over here. And these two clips that are being triggered, these two slots are empty. So if we go to pattern one in this first Profit track, and I'll just drag this up a bit and you'll see what we've got in here. Now this isn't the actual notes that are being played because what's happening here is these two notes, the C6 and the C4, are working with the Stepic 
that's in this track. The C6 note which goes right the way across two bars that is triggering pattern one and the C4 here is triggering the transport and basically it work with any note other than the notes you've chosen to choose the patterns. It took me a while to get my head around it but it works really well. So if we come away from that and we go to pattern two now this one let's drag this up a bit now this is C sharp six and C four so the C sharp six is triggering pattern two in Stepic and the C4 is triggering the transport. And this copy here, track three, is simply a copy of track two. So I've got the same thing, but here on these lower two slots, what I did was I dragged and dropped the MIDI data from the Stepic into that. Let's just show you that. So if I just turn this on for a moment and go to it. So this is pattern one. So here I simply got hold of this icon, dragged it over to this pattern here. And then with pattern two, did the same thing, dragged the icon over to pattern two. Just close that down. If I click on this pattern one, D and D, drag and drop, you'll see the notes, the actual notes are in here. Okay, and pattern two, different notes, because it's a different pattern. So this pattern and this pattern, not using Stepic, so now when I play these clips, they simply play the MIDI data and Stepic is not being used. If I go to the second track, the one where we are using Stepic, and we open up this pattern. Now, here's a tip. I've clicked this scale button. If I unclick it, you get these very thin notes. If you want to see them nice and big, click scale, and then they come up nice and big. But obviously, you need more real estate to see all of that. So, um, you know, it's worth bearing in mind there. So this is track two, we'll just go to it. Okay, we've got these three automation lanes. So with this particular pattern, pattern number one, we are automating the cutoff and the glide and the attack. If we just run this. Now, if we go to the synth by clicking this spanner icon, you'll see the attack and the cutoff and the glide are being automated. You see the knobs going crazy here. With pattern two, I go to this and I go to the Stepic. It's the same version of Stepic, don't forget. But pattern two, do you remember, has no automation. So if I run this, it's a different pattern and there is no automation. So pattern one has got step it running with automation, pattern two step it running with no automation. But over here with this track, profit copy, pattern one, drag and drop, pattern two, drag and drop, exactly the same patterns. It's a different instance of step it, which is turned off notice. So if you try and open it, it won't open. If I double click on this, you can see the actual notes there. This one's the same as pattern one in the other track. So it's got some automation. If we show you the automation, there we go. It says undefined down here. Yeah, so 15 was the cutoff, three was the glide, 30 was the attack. Three different sorts of automation, and that's dragged and dropped to that track. Now, you might remember that pattern two, this one here, had notes but no automation. So if I go to notes, there are notes, go to envelopes, and Yes, you've got these still available, but there's nothing there because I didn't put any automation in that. So with this kind of setup, it's a movable feast, isn't it? You can either have Step It running and alter it on the fly, or you can have the slots, the MIDI clips with the MIDI data dragged and dropped from Step It into them. That might be what you want. With this setup, you've got the opportunity to do both and that's why I've used two different tracks here. So I want to thank Jens from Device Meister, who is the developer, who's been very supportive ever since I got Stepic, which is about two weeks now. Stepic's a brilliant plugin and it works really well with Live. This one is specifically for working with Ableton Live. This is Ableton Live 12 and it works perfectly with it. 
So we'll start with kick only. Then we'll do kick plus pattern one. That's the pattern that's got the automation not burnt into it. It's triggering the stepping. Let's just put this on over here. So here we go. So we go to step pick. There we are, that's the automation on those three lanes. Now we'll go to kick and pattern two. Different notes. Go to step it. You can see down here that the number two is highlighted. But go back to this one. Keep your eye on the step pick. See, it's gone to one. Let's go back to two. What should change? There we go. Just go to it. And there you see there's no automation, it's all flat. And those are the notes. Right, now we'll drop down to scene four. Now this is this clip here. Stepping's turned off. And this is this clip here with this automation and notes burnt into it. And finally, scene five is this one. Different notes. All the notes are dragged and dropped into the clip and there's no automation. It's a great idea to name and colour everything so that you know what you're doing and where everything is, otherwise you can get horribly lost with all this, of course. You can see in the device area down here which pattern is being played, which is useful, isn't it? Like I showed you before. Down here, of course, you've got these two windows. So if I click this window here, you see the devices, and you click here, you see the MIDI note editor. I'm sorry, I know it is a little bit of a rigmarole, but I think once you get your head around it, you'll soon get the idea, and it is very, very useful. So there we are. hope you enjoyed that. If you got some value out of today's video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much for watching, and you'll see me in my next video.